Hello, YouTube. <laughs> All right, welcome back to another day of cooking with Denoy, where we uh, take our four dollar and fifty cent Walmart rotisserie chicken and uh, show different ways that we can cook it up and serve it, just to show you how you can stretch your budget out. Um, you know, for those of you on a really tight budget, I, I really do think this chicken is a very good value at $4.50 in my area. I heard um, from some viewers that it's actually more expensive in other areas. But uh, you can still stretch the chicken out by making all these different meals from it. So overall, I think um, you could save a lot of money by not eating the chicken like in all one setting as a chicken, but using it to, to serve up different meals. For today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, in a lot of the other episodes, you've seen me make things that are mostly Asian in nature, although I talked about making sandwiches, which you could do. Um, today, we're going to try to make something a little bit more, I guess, American or maybe Italian. <laughs> Basically, we're just going to make spaghetti, chicken spaghetti. So instead of meatballs, the plan will be to make spaghetti using pego, um, garlic and herb sauce, you know, just a can of that. I think it's like a dollar from Dollar Tree. And the spaghetti, we're not going to use it all up, just enough for one serving. And also some um, chicken meat, which I think we're like on day four. This chicken's getting old. <laughs> I got to eat it up today or tomorrow at the latest. But we're going to grab some of this chicken and toss it in the meat um, to use for the, uh, the spaghetti, as the meat inside the spaghetti. And on the side... We still have our leftover uh, spring mix, which is starting to get a little bit wilty now, which I means I don't need to eat it all today. And I could put it into like a noodle or something, which would probably be the best, but I'm gonna try to make salad with it. So for today, we're gonna take, uh, as a matter of fact, we're not, we're not just gonna make salad, we're gonna make chicken salad. <laughs> so, you're going to see me make chicken salad with the chicken here as well as uh, using it to make spaghetti. I've got some water uh, heating up right now, and you can see it is heating up. So what I'm gonna do is take the spaghetti and break it up. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually uh, just take some spaghetti out of here. It looks like I have one that's, no, I don't have any open ones. So we're gonna go ahead and use this one. I don't use a whole packet to cook because obviously this is gonna make way more spaghetti than I can eat. And the spaghetti I'm going to make today will probably be for a meal I'm going to eat right now as well as dinner. I'm going to have some leftover. But basically, I grab a handful. Let me show you about how much I use. Okay. So this is like a handful of spaghetti. And I'm actually going to get a little bit more, but I'm going to break that in half. So I just take it in the center and I just kind of break it. And you're like, why is he breaking the spaghetti? Well, I'm breaking the spaghetti because... I need it to fit into this little pot. So I just put a little bit of water in there. You can see it was like about it, just a little bit above the line of the thing. And I'm gonna add some more spaghetti. And I used to I used to make the spaghetti and dump the, um, the water, drain it out. But lately I've just been leaving it in there by not using so much water. And what it does is it cooks it in, in the pasta releases, uh, I guess, stuff. But it goes into the water. And then that'll go as part of the spaghetti mix. So I made a second batch here that we are going to grab and put here and let this boil. And what's going to happen is the, uh, the spaghetti is going to boil. And I know some people put salt and stuff in there, but I don't bother because uh, the sauce and everything else will have the salt. So I'm just going to let that water boil. It is on maximum. And it will boil right up. And once it boils up, I'll be just tossing in this garlic, the uh, the garlic, uh, I guess the garlic spaghetti sauce there that I bought from Dollar Tree. So we'll go ahead and put this up. And what we're going to make now while we're waiting for the spaghetti to, to finish cooking is actually the side dish, which I'm going to have a big side dish of um, salad, not just salad chicken salad <laughs> so wash the hand again and I'm just gonna grab the the salad it's a little soft some of it's starting to get a little soft so I'm gonna avoid the soft pieces and um, put the salad in there and believe it or not I think um, 
I think what I'm going to do is actually add. You know, the, the cool thing about salad is you can you can make it however you want to, whatever ingredients you like, whatever you have handy. So in my case, I'm going to add stuff that I know that I like and that is handy that I have right now. So here are the secret surprise ingredients that I'm going to be throwing in. We're going to toss in a, a little lemon. Not lemon. <laughs> seeing if you were paying attention this is a tomato and i think it's called a uh, romano tomato is that what it is so i'm gonna have a little tomato and i still have some of our uh mushroom from the other day and some onion so this is gonna be a full-blown salad so what we're gonna do is set the salad aside for now the salad bowl and take our handy dandy Hessler steak knife and we're gonna cut the onion. We're gonna careful this knife is sharp. Okay, so the salad I don't need too much onion, so I think just one ring like this, you know, one one cut. And then what I'll do is break up break up the onion into little rings. And then um Toss it right into the salad bowl like this. So this will give me crunchy onion rings in my bowl of salad. So set this. So we still have leftover onion. We're gonna save for something else. So you can see this. This food is really uh, stretching and able to be used over several days, which saves money. Not only that, it's, it's like pretty good, you know. So we're gonna take some of our um, mushrooms, which is starting to turn a little bit brownie. You know, remember how white they were the first day? So I'm probably gonna, this is a little too much. I'm probably gonna um, cook up the mushrooms later today or tomorrow, use them in something, stir fry or something. But I have some mushrooms there because I love mushrooms and I have a gazillion of them. And you know what? I, I also have some carrots, so what I'm going to do is toss, I have some baby carrots here, which I'm going to rinse off, and I have some organic baby carrots that I bought, so what I will do is actually rinse these guys, put them in the water here, rub them off, throw them in, that's already looking good, isn't it? So this is our salad, and let's take advantage of our chicken. This is actually enough to probably fill somebody up. You know, those of you who aren't as fat as me, who don't eat as much, you probably just have salad like this, and that would be a, a good lunch, something to fill your tummy up. But I take the chicken and kind of break some pieces here, so I have some nice cooked rotisserie chicken right on the uh, the salad. So it's gonna be chicken salad. And that's looking really good right there. Mm, I'm already salivating just uh, looking at this food. So, mm, a little taste there of the chicken. This is what our, our salad is looking like. A little bit out of focus, so let's get it focused for you. And that looks so delicious looking. Mm. And we got the last of the Makoto's. So I'm gonna shake this guy up. Pour on Makoto's. This is gonna be our, our little appetizer, I guess, before the, um, or side dish, in addition to our chicken spaghetti. So, stay tuned. Wow, you know what? I, I just realized I forgot our tomato. <laughs> so, we get to slice some tomato. Wash the tomato off here. Now slice up the tomato. Piece of tomato. And I'm going to cut. I'm just cutting, like, chunks. You know, chunky tomato. So... Basically, I'm making triangles. I 
I think having access to an RV or a house where you can actually store food, you know, um, makes it so you can eat better. When I say eat better, I don't mean just, you know, like, um, more foods. I'm talking about you can eat, like, uh, vegetables and fruits and meats and stuff like that because you have the ability to store food. Now, I know some people who live in a van, they store food in um, one of those little freezer units or refrigerator units that they can keep in their van, and that can be done, you know, but those things tend to be kind of expensive, and also you're limited by how much food you can store. Um, storage of food in a RV or a, or a house, you're going to have a lot more room. You're going to be able to store more food, so, you, you know, you don't have to make as many grocery runs. It is possible to make pretty much everything that I'm making right now in a van. It's just uh, your, your big thing's going to be like leftovers. You're going to have so much uh, leftovers that you have to store it. Otherwise, you're going to be wasting all this food. So just a nice shot here of the, I guess that is the uh, Makoto's chicken salad with tomatoes mushrooms, onions, and a spring salad mix, which has, um, let me see what was on the spring salad mix. It says it has baby lettuce blend with baby greens blend. So, I've used up the whole thing now, so the salad, the $2.45 salad that we bought like four days ago is finally used up. <laughs> and the, the chicken is going to be the last day for the chicken. I am going to toss some of this it's not going to be the last meal, actually. There may be one more meal I can make because I have um, those um, mushrooms that I need to cook up. So I'll probably make a soup or something. And also, I don't know if you notice all that, that gooey um, gel gelatinous stuff over there, that brown stuff. That's really kind of tasty. I like eating that with rice. So I might cook up some rice and do something. Maybe make a stir fry or something to eat with it. But I'm going to take a lot of what's left here on the meat and use it here in our pasta very soon as this thing starts to boil and soften up and the water starts to evaporate away, we will have pasta. We will have, um, I don't know if there's such a thing as chicken spaghetti <laughs> with salad on the side. All right, the, um, the noodles are slowly but surely heating up. This um, electrical cooking is actually slow. I don't know if it's defective. It keeps shutting off, probably because it's overheating or something. But it's still not fully cooked. I can see it's still a little bit stiff, but it is uh, enough that I think I can add all the other ingredients. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm actually gonna take my Prego, which I've opened up here already, and pour that in. And let that kind of mix in. Because we're gonna cover this thing with a lid to let it cook a little bit faster. The main thing you're doing with the the spaghetti noodles is softening them up. You know, with the, the water, it'll heat up. The hot water will heat up and soak. I do have some Italian seasoning, Supreme Tradition, which we're just going to pour in. Now this, this seasoning is basically, um, it says fine, oregano, marjoram, basil, rosemary, and sage. So... Mix all that in there just to give it a little bit more oomph. Make myself a little bit more Italian. All right, I think we got enough. What do you think? And then to top it off, we're gonna to toss in the chicken. Let me try to clamp this guy down here if I can. Got a little bit of a, a camera assistant issue here. My camera holder. All right, so that is heating up right now. It's continuing to heat up. And what I'm going to do is take my chicken. Remember our, our rotisserie chicken? And I'm breaking up chunks of chicken and I'm tossing it right in there. So this is going to have some chunky, chunky chicken. So we're using up, I think, the majority of what's left on the, the breast meat. And just tossing that in. And what I will do once I get everything in there is mix it up and um, cover it. So 
instead of uh, using meatballs or something, I'm using chicken. I don't know if Italians do this, but I know I do. <laughs> I've done it before and it actually tastes pretty good. The, the key is um, learning how to take advantage of whatever resources you have, like, you know, this chicken meat, and just putting together dishes to eat so that um, you can stretch your food budget. So, this is like uh, brown, like dark meat the, from the legs. So, I still have quite a bit of chicken left. Way more. It's amazing how much you should get out of this um, Walmart rotisserie chicken. It's just amazing. I actually have enough. I think I could make two, three more meals if I wanted to. But I'm going to try to make one more tonight. Just to show you what I do with like what's left over of, of chicken meat. And we're going to toss that in. This is a lot of meat. All right. And I think we have enough. So let me wash my hands real quick. And at this point, what we're going to do is stir things up. And let this continue to boil. Because what it's going to do right now is it's just going to um, soak in the, the juices, the, the tomato juice. The noodles will soak that in. And the, uh, the chicken will soak that in. But to help it out, I'm going to go ahead and put a lid on it. Soft my lid here. I still have it on high heat, but this thing's like heating up much slower than um, the butane. But still, it's free energy. I don't have to pay for it any more than I've already paid. So, to save money, we'll keep using it, even though if I was in a rush, I might go ahead and use the butane. Now, I do have chicken left over which I could toss at this point, but I'm actually going to eat that. I'm going to make something else tonight, maybe one final dish. So, and honestly, I could have made two dishes because there's still enough chicken there. But I'm going to make one more just to show you what you can do as a finale. <laughs> so, this is going to heat up, and once it heats up, we're going to go ahead and serve it with our, our salad. So, stay tuned for that. All right, I've actually had a change in plan. I, I remember that I had some leftover mushrooms. I was trying to figure out when I was going to cook these mushrooms up, and I couldn't make stir fries or noodles or anything else with it. I could even freeze it to make it last longer, but I think I'm going to go ahead and use it tonight, today. So I'm going to dump it right into the um, spaghetti there. And we'll take our, our little spaghetti grabber thing and use this to mix things up. So I will go ahead and soak the mushroom by um, burying it underneath the sauce. And we'll know it's kind of done when the mushrooms get soft. So we got chicken and... I don't know if there's such a thing as chicken and mushroom spaghetti. Do the Italians cook like this? We're just totally Asian, Italian, leftover. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Stay tuned, it should be done soon. All right, I think our spaghetti is done now. You can see the water is collected up here. Looking really, really good. Set that lid aside. Turn off our heat. Turn this off, even though it's already off at this point. And what we're gonna do is scoop up our spaghetti here. If I can move this without hurting myself. Get our little scooper. Scoop up some, yeah, the, the noodles I can see are at the right consistency. They're kind of soft. Not too soft, not soggy, but soft. And the um, the mushrooms could probably cook a little bit longer. That's all right, I'll eat it like that. It'll be somewhat crunchy, but that's okay. So I'm gonna scoop all this up. Looking really good. Now, the cool thing is you can actually add other vegetables and stuff into this if you wanted to. Then, you know, like you don't have to have salad on the side. You could kind of toss tomatoes, toss um, whatever you want. One of the cool things about making your own food 
is you can um, make it however you like. You can put what you want. If you don't like something, you don't have to put it in there. That's the good thing about making your own food. You know, when you got the order, you're kind of eating what the, the chef, whoever the cook is, whatever, thinks will be good. And they make it according to how they, they would eat it or how they think people like to eat it. But when you make it yourself, you can put in only what you want. You can use leftover ingredients. You can use fresh ingredients, whatever you want. So I do have some cheap, uh, I think this is from Dollar Tree. It's Parmesan cheese, grated Parmesan. So we're going to sprinkle that on there. I do like this cheese, so I'm going to sprinkle quite a bit. All right. And then to bring out the flavor, I like to put on some crushed pepper. This is cheap uh, Walmart crushed pepper, red crushed pepper. And we just kind of liberally sprinkle it all over the food. So here then is our, our finished plate. And that looks so good. And we're gonna go ahead and serve it here in a moment. Bring it over here and you can uh, see how I will be eating today. So for today's meal, we're gonna be having spaghetti, chicken spaghetti with Makoto's uh, ginger dressing salad and Mountain Dew as we watch the Legend of Zelda. <laughs> For those of you wondering what's going on here with this, um, I do have a, um, a program called, uh, I think, what is it, SNES? It's an emulator for the Super Nintendo system. John Davis, if you're watching this, this is the exact same emulator we used to run in my classroom that you guys used to play. So that's how old this stuff is. A lot of my um, emulators and stuff like that that I have are actually like 20 years old. So this is really old technology. This is stuff we were doing back when I was still teaching first grade. So I can play Nintendo on here. Let me kind of exit just to show you what it kind of looks like here. So you can see it's got the, the window screen um, video. We're going to turn it off from full screen. You can see we're actually running under Windows. And it's running, and I can play it. Um, I haven't ever actually solved you know, Legend of Zelda. So one of these days, when I actually have time, I may actually try to play it through. But just wanted to show you the kind of stuff we can do. And um, this is like a really old machine. But it's emulating a Super Nintendo. John was telling me, I guess he's got an emulator now for Nintendo 64, which we probably have even better games. So emulators are pretty cool because they allow your, your PC to become anything. And, um, you know, it's, it's something I'm fascinated with and have always been. So it'll be pretty neat. And... Um, I can basically sit here and play games if I wanted to while I was eating. While I'm eating, um, I probably won't play, but I just wanted to show you what could be done. So, without further ado, let's do a taste test. Mmm, doesn't that look so good? Look at that. We have chunks of chunks of mushroom. Let's get a piece of. Uh, I'm gonna try and find a piece of chicken here. Looks like the chicken's hiding. Okay, so I got a, a chunk of mushroom, chunk of chicken, and a bunch of noodles, and we're gonna go ahead and do a quick taste test, and here we go. Oh my goodness. That is so good. Mm. Delicious. Doesn't taste like the usual, um, spaghetti probably because it's got chicken in it and mushrooms that are you know that could be cooked a little bit more but it's still very very good a lot better than what i was eating in the van just because it's a little bit more complicated meal to make and i used a lot of leftovers can make something like this in the van it's just that um you know you end up with leftover ingredients is a problem so let's go ahead and try another bite this is really really good stuff the um the mushrooms give it kind of a, a puffy, coarse taste. The pasta noodles and stuff taste like normal, very good. But the chicken meat brings the flavor down. It kind of tones it down. It, it you know, the um, tomato kind of has a, a kind of a bitter taste, but the chicken kind of offsets that. Mmm. 
so good. I can eat this every day. And let's try a little bit of our salad. Look at the salad. Mmm. And that looks so good. Now the chicken here is the rotisserie chicken. Get a chunk. I don't think you have to mix everything, but we're gonna get a chunk of tomato right now. Mmm. With the Mikado's dressing. Some fresh um, mushrooms. Oh my goodness. The dressing has a very strong a vinegary taste. And the uh, mushrooms kind of mute it down. You know, mushrooms have kind of a, a spongy texture. Look at this. Doesn't that look so good? Oh my goodness. Mmm! Considering that the chicken's now four days old. <laughs> Not four days old. Four days since I purchased it already pre-cooked, so it's a pretty old chicken. This is still a very good meal. This is a fantastic meal. I would venture out to say that this is probably a meal better than um, I would buy at most restaurants. I don't normally go to Italian restaurants and stuff. And when I do, you know, I, I think this is comparable or even better than what they serve. And, um... It's something that I made pretty much with scraps. So, total cost for this meal, if I had to break it down, probably a dollar or less for everything. Because of how long we stretched the food out. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you uh, picked up some tips. And I hope that, uh, if, if nothing else, this gives you some ideas on the kind of things you can do with rotisserie chicken. I think I may film the last segment. Maybe, maybe not, but I probably will film it just to close out the series. Just to show you what else you can do with a chicken when you have, like, nothing but bits of it left over like that. So until next time, everyone, take care. God bless you all. Please stay safe. And remember, you can cook anything any way you want when you make it yourself. Mm. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye now.